down the main reactor will be destroyed for sure. In movies, pretty much every sound effect and a large chunk of dialogue is made up in post-production, from footsteps to gunshots to R2-D2. <laughs> But there's more to sound design than just making believable sounds. Humans are surprisingly good at associating many different sounds with a particular action on screen, which is why we can think this is rainfall when it's actually sizzling bacon. Clever designers use this human ability to add emotion to their mixing. Instead of making perfectly realistic sounds, they'll create sounds that seem close enough to the actual thing to keep us immersed, but that also carry the emotional feeling of the sound. The result is brain trickery, but more importantly, the sound tells us how to feel. To see what I mean, let's do some listening. No, I will not be quiet, Chewbacca. Why doesn't anyone listen to me? One movie that effectively deceives our ears is Star Wars. And it's not just lying because they added sound after filming. Sound designer Ben Burt also had to imagine completely new sounds, oftentimes mixing them from everyday noises. Like much of the other sound design around Star Wars, the sounds are fresh enough to transport us to a new world, but familiar enough so that they elicit a particular emotional reaction. The sound of the TIE fighters comes from the roar of elephants. <laughs> but they also sound very similar to the German dive bombers from World War II. Whether or not this connection was intentional, it subtly reminds us they're the bad guys. Here the sound is not only believable, but it also provides the correct emotional cue. But Bert does more than just convey feeling through sound. He uses the sound to tell a story. He accomplishes this feat with perhaps the most famous sound in movie history. It's worth noting that our first impression of Darth Vader doesn't come from his voice, but from his breathing. Without that particularly human sound effect, he would only be a faceless villain in armor. But with the addition of the sound of his breathing, our imaginations run wild. How did he get to be this way? Is it assistance or is it enhancement? The mechanical sounds complements his superhuman strength, but it also implies a human side of him. Not only does it sound like life support, but it quickens when he duels, showing he's not invincible. His ambiguous sound design complements his mystery as a villain as well as his character arc. Right from the beginning, we get a subtle indication of a flawed and potentially redeemable character. Before Burt, aliens tended to have cold and flat sound design with generic shrieks. He added storytelling into his made-up sounds, so that Chewbacca can sound like an alien creature while also having a broad and earthly emotional range. <laughs> Alright, don't lose your temper. And he adds that emotion to all his sounds, not just with aliens. If you listen to explosions off on the news, things recorded in actual warfare, sometimes it doesn't seem to have quite the body and the tone range that you are used to hearing in motion pictures. <laughs> For the best explosion sounds, Burt actually had to mix them from missiles, rockets, and tanks. Even with an actual sound available, he fabricated his own to capture the emotion behind the sound. Filmmakers regularly add style to pre-existing noises for emotional effect. In Sergio Leone movies, the gunshot noise is actually the sound of a cannon firing. This choice perfectly embodies the exaggerated style of spaghetti westerns, giving gunshots more weight in epic showdowns where every bullet counts. The sound wouldn't fit in early John Wayne westerns, where gunfire is frequent and less consequential. A gunshot can capture the overall feeling of an action movie. The sound designers for No Country for Old Men specifically said they weren't looking to create something realistic out of their gunshots, but something menacing. They describe the silencer noise as homemade, and the sound suits Anton perfectly. <laughs> Even though he acts so cold and evil, his murders sound intimate and personal as he invades people's homes and workplaces. This mixing of the intimate and the calculated creates a conflicting and disturbing atmosphere around our villain. When it comes to Anton, you're the most vulnerable where you're the most comfortable. When listening to a gun in a movie, the sound gives you a better idea of the kind of movie you're watching than the actual sound of a gunshot, which is part of the reason why this sounds a lot different than this. To capture the feeling of chaotic combat in Saving Private Ryan, sound designer Gary Rydstrom placed heavy emphasis on bullets moving instead of just gunshots. The Normandy scene has different sounds for bullets hitting the ocean, the beach, or helmets. And this level of detail helps the scene stand out from other war movies, where all the bullets tend to feel the same. Where the hell are they? I can't see nothing! 
One scene in Saving Private Ryan opens with the beginning of rainfall. As it rains harder, we start to hear gunfire, and for a few seconds, it's impossible to differentiate the sound of rain from the sound of bullets. Here we are literally hearing gunfire rain down on us. It's a clever auditory trick, but more importantly, it places us in the same emotional space as the characters on screen. The entire movie is an incredible example of subjective sound. In the same way that a director of photography chooses what to focus on, the sound designer in Saving Private Ryan chooses what the audience should hear. At the beginning of the sniper standoff, you can hear people in the town, artillery, and soldiers talking. Once we see the two snipers looking from their scopes, we only hear water dripping. We cut from the German drips on the window to the metallic drips from the American. The isolation of a specific sound differentiates the two spaces and puts us in the sniper's head, tuning out our surroundings to land an important shot. Sound can be a completely subjective experience depending on the moment. In Raging Bull, Jake appears to hear everything Vicky says to Tommy even though she's across the room. The dialogue is also out of sync with their lips, implying that Jake is imagining it all. In the movie, Jake asserts his manhood to himself and the public by beating up other men. He takes pride in the praise he gets while fighting, and sound designer Frank Warner emphasizes the scrutiny he feels while in the ring. As he fights, we always hear faceless commentators judging his every move. <laughs> and the flashbulbs from the cameras constantly watch him, increasing in intensity and frequency during dramatic moments. And soon, that aggression and scrutiny shows itself outside of the ring. While Jake watches Tommy and Vicky, we hear the same flashbulb noise over each cut, even though there aren't any cameras there. In this moment, he feels the sounds of the ring, the sounds of others watching and judging him, but his opponent is now a man flirting with his wife. Through the sound design, we can hear how Jake now sees the real world as a boxing ring, and everyone in it as potential opponents. These sound choices foreshadow the eventual fight between Joey and Jake, where we hear the same animal noises we previously only heard in the ring. In this movie, the flashbulbs are a dark, mechanical reminder of Jake's broken psyche. His obsession with asserting masculinity ruined his life, and he ends up completely alone because of it. And at the end, when he's lost everything, it's still the only thing he has. <laughs> the sound of those flashbulbs was more than just a bulb. There were five or six sounds and they're working for each one of those flashes. Marty asked me how I did that. I said, I won't tell you. And he got a little upset. And I said, if I told you, all the magic would be gone. New card. What do you think? It's fun to know the creative ways Foley artists make their sounds, but the real innovation comes from the emotional effect of those sounds. In American Psycho, the cardholder opening is the sound of a sword coming out of a sheath. It's the perfect sound for an already ridiculous scene, where the comparison of business cards feels like a duel to the death. Through exaggerating noise, we enhance the dramatic moment. And the same goes for comedic sound. As the sound designer for Naked Gun said, it's funnier to not use reality. But I think my favorite sound design choices are when filmmakers add noise where there shouldn't be any in the first place. There are girls watching. It's a perfect way to give weight to movement, whether it's for laughs or intensity. Call me. Some of the most imaginative sound design comes from the Wachowskis, where they'll even add sound to the movement of the camera. Their film, The Matrix, is the perfect case study to see how far sound can go. Designer Dane Davis said he wanted the sound design to evolve during the movie, becoming increasingly stylistic and powerful. The first fight with Trinity broke some rules, but the combat sounds relatively realistic. Other than Trinity's questionable feats, the opening fight has sound design that could have been in a typical action movie. But with each fight, Davis recreated his noises from scratch. Notice how the hits have a little bit more weight to them in the construct. Progressively more stylized sounds of the Matrix contrast to the scenes in reality, where the sound design is always grounded and heavy. By the lobby scene, the sound feels far removed from reality. Davis slowed down and sped up the sound effects to show how Neo bends his own reality. At some moments, we only hear the bullets moving, other times only the sound of bullets hitting stone. In this scene, the Matrix pushes the envelope for what's possible in sound design. 
and it's the movie's gradual progression to this point that helps make the scene believable. Davis knew how far he could push the sound design. He had an idea to make the simulations reuse sound effects to make it feel fake, like having all the footsteps sound the same or make some sounds loop in the background. But they ran into the problem that limitations of the Matrix might feel like limitations of the filmmakers, as in bad filmmaking. So he knew when he could change the rules and when he couldn't. But in many ways, the rules of the Matrix are a lot like the rules of sound design. Some of them can be bent. Others can be broken. You hear that? Yeah. That is the sound of a thousand terrible things heading this way. I think Ben Burtt sums up sound design best when describing making a space shuttle sound by recording the Los Angeles freeway. I was miking at various distances, but the sound still didn't sound full enough. I took that sound, ran it through a subwoofer, took all the highs out of it, and when I added it to the production sound, somehow it sounded more like the real thing than the real thing. When it comes to sound design, lying gets us closer to the truth, and depending on the movie, what that sound needs to feel like could be completely different. A filmmaker's job, first and foremost, is to capture the emotion of a story, and in many cases, actual realism comes second. So the next time you watch a movie, don't just pay attention to the sound. Pay attention to what that sound is trying to say, because you never quite- Shh, 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 shh. Do you hear that? It's the winds of change. You hear it? You hear the wind? You change? Anyway, what a creep. One of these days, I am really gonna let you teach that guy a lesson. Many sound designers are secret about their craft. Frank Warner famously destroyed all his sounds after each movie, and George Lucas owns a secluded ranch in California where his production companies gather their sounds. Thankfully, modern technology means you don't have to go to such extremes to protect your work. With the right tools, you can stay completely secure while online. For a product that's easy to use and has all the features I need, I use Dashlane. With Dashlane, you can manage your passwords, generate new secure passwords, and have your own VPN. I have all my sensitive information and passwords stored through my Dashlane account so that I stay safe while I'm online. You can try out the basic free version before deciding to purchase. All you have to do is download it and you won't have to worry about online security issues ever again. Go to the link in the description to try Dashlane Premium free for 30 days. And if you like it, the first 200 people can use the code now you see it to get 10% off Dashlane Premium at checkout. Thank you Dashlane for sponsoring this video and thank you to my Patreon supporters who all got early access to this video before the general public. Thanks for watching.